everyone, and welcome back to the return of the Obra Din. This is episode four. Last time, we made a pretty significant amount of headway, but there were a lot of hurdles in the way before we had just a bit of a eureka moment, I would say, in terms of figuring out some identities. We had a lot of mismatched identities. We had people that we were like, I feel like it's this person, but it was like someone who was right next to them or across from them or just in that same area. So we were close and then just had to nail it down a bit. So we're going to continue this same train of thought that we've been having, which is we're going back through our crew log. We're trying to place names. We've got all the dialogue in these memories to refer to and we're just going to study it and see how we do. We have discovered, uh, I believe we are looking to be over halfway on our total amount of fates. So we'll just have to see how we go, won't we? So let's head back to the ship and let's have another fun day on the Obra Dinn. Now, we are going to go through these chapters and I would like to research our dialogue. So if we go all the way to the end of the book, and I would like to refer to the first chapter that we ever looked at. Because there was something that I was thinking of here where now that we have sort of explored all of the chapters, and we have it all laid out. We can now look for all of the connective tissue. We can now have more of an understanding on some of the initial chapters that we went through that allude to things or they make references to things that we don't we don't know yet. But what's really cool is now that we've gone through it, it's all available to us. So we can look at like stuff like this where we started off at the end and they're telling us lest we break it down and take more than those shells. You bastards may take exactly what I give you. So we know that there was mutiny plans. It looks like they're trying to take something. We know that there's some mysterious magical related thing with a chest and that actual sea monsters are about. And it's, re it's really fun and mysterious seeing just like what exactly is going on here and how confusing it is, but we're piecing it together. I don't have a tremendous amount of knowledge about uh, all sorts of different accents and locations and, and stuff like that. So, you know, we're, we're working on it. You got to really like listen to accents in the voices. You've got to really kind of keep your ear out for any references to where people are from. Like last episode, we got the, you know, the bloody Dane reference. So it's stuff like that, that we really need to, to think about. I'm wondering if, I'm a bit curious about the, the X marks on the dialogue actually. I think okay I think what the what the X marks might be might be referring to unidentified people like where are they must be in here someplace they're at the bottom of the sea, which I think is quoted by the captain, and then that's a lie. So I think if it's marked with an X in the dialogue, so that's being spoken by the person that we haven't identified, which is good information. And getting that from here is where I got that from, because we've identified the captain, there's no X there. So they're looking for something. They're at the bottom of the sea. That's a lie. Now, in terms of who this person is, uh, we've we've clearly been guessing in terms of their 
where they're from. We know that they're a top man. And it's either the Scottish one or it's the English one. And I am yet to determine who. But we know that they're also tied in with killing uh, the fourth mate, I believe. So whichever one of those is correct, we'll just have to wait and see. No dialogue in this one whatsoever, just this man, Lewis Walker, getting clubbed by the captain. And then we've got this message of Abigail, your brother, my friend, I shot him dead. This is how we were able to identify this one. I'll be with you soon. Please forgive me for everything. So that was what happened with the end. In the escape, Henry Evans has met an unknown fate, except he's alive. Where is Morocco? I'm going to um, have to tie into, I'm going to have to do what's uh, referred to as a uh, phone a friend here for my geography knowledge. And I'm, I'm just going to, this is how you learn information. Where's Morocco? I need to know where Morocco is, because that's where he is. Um, <laughs> where's Morocco? You know, because if we read the book, not read the book, if we read the, the journey, and we go to the thing, guaranteed post to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. And Morocco is... North Africa. Okay. This is this is how we learn by researching and understanding geography. Um it's either I ask that question or I uh just guess until we get the answer. So there you go. Um I've looked up where Morocco is. Let's just pretend for role playing purposes what we've done is we've gone, Hey mate, I made in the ship over there. Do you know where Morocco is? He goes, Oi! I hear it's North Africa. Okay. That's how we that's how we got our answer. And then we're like, okay, perfect. Um, he is much higher up. I don't know why I went to the bottom. Okay, so Henry Evans is alive in Africa. There you go. So we're gonna put that in there. We will put that in there. Now let's head to the escape chapter. Now I want to have a look at this. Let's go through this dialogue. So we've got... We've got these of the squid. Where is my Frenchman? The squid's gone. Your mate was torn apart. Okay. Now we've identified... Hmm. We've identified this person. Actually, I don't think the X marks relate to someone at all. Because, damn it. Okay. I think the X marks just are spaces between different people talking because the captain has been marked off, but he didn't have an X next to his name, but this guy has been marked off and does have an X next to his name. So that doesn't actually help me. I thought I had a cool little dialogue clue there where I was like, awesome. If they have um, been marked off, they kind of crossed off on the, on the thing. That's unfortunately not how it works. Um, but someone else who's here, He's talking about his um, Frenchman, which would be the bosun's mate. And he has not been identified yet. 
but I think we actually can identify him now. So, um, he was, he was torn apart. So I need to go back to the doom and it's the very first chapter of the doom that we experienced, which was this one. And I would say that this is, well, this guy, I would say that this guy is our Frenchman then, because I'm trying to look for this guy's friend that would be in this image. It's, I don't think it's this guy. It's, he was killed elsewhere, so he's not French looking. This guy. I'm going to say that this is our French guy, Charles Minor the Bosun's mate, was torn apart uh, by the beast, as per the description. Because he was with Alfred. Looks like I might need to get something else right before we get confirmation on that, but that seems pretty good to me. Let's go back to reviewing, shall we? Squid, where is my Frenchman? Your mate was torn apart. We didn't, it left with the storm. Captain came up from the hold, said he chased it off. So he chased it off. A curse like that does not lift for nothing. Okay. And then someone was eavesdropping. Paul, look out. Stop, let them go. And I think we identified Paul in this instance. did we? Hang on. Oh. Damn. Hang on a minute. Hmm. This unknown seaman was killed with a sword by Leonid. Oh. Damn. This dude's just Paul. This dude's just Paul. Paul Moss. They said his goddamn name. Goddamn. Paul Moss was killed by Leonid. Charles Minor the Boosin's mate was torn apart by a terrible beast. And Henry Evans is alive in Africa. There we go. Nice. See, this is the good part about what I was saying about going through all the chapters and laying it all out because now we can slowly have a look at everything in front of us. It's all on the table and we're piecing it all together. We're looking at it and we're doing this and we're going, okay, this is here, this is here. And now we can go through it. So there was like a breakneck speed of going through all of the chapters intentionally to lay it all out. And now we can work our magic. So there you go. Henry Evans is alive. We're now seeing the very obvious dialogue things instead of it being like uh, vocalized where I can, you can miss things. It's written now so I can go through and refer to all the dialogue that is now written and pick up on all that information. Like stuff that's really obvious, for example, like Paul... Paul saying the person's actual name, look out, right? And then you can see how this game, depending on how you approach it, can really trip you up because this guy is the guy that I thought was Patrick O'Hagan for the longest time just because we were getting hung up on something in the calling chapter, which was much, much later. And if we just paid a little bit more attention during the escape chapter, we would have identified this man as Paul immediately. And then it would have just been figuring out who the guy that killed him was. So we got there in the end. We've had a couple, like I said, we've had a couple of silly ones. Like 
the guy getting killed by Emily Jackson. And this guy is definitely another one of those silly ones where it says the name. <laughs> it says the name. Uh, and we just clearly were not paying uh, enough attention to identify this man. So we, we should have identified him uh, so, so long ago. Uh, so that's done. Leonard's done. Olus is done. Now, this one is interesting because what this confirms in terms of getting our three fates correct is this man is not Timothy Butman and he's not um, Nicholas Botterill either. Very interesting. He is someone else entirely. And we're going to have to go through a lot of things to figure out who this man in particular is. But he's a, he's a big old mystery to me. He's in 17 memories. He's in 17 memories. So if I bookmark this guy, let's go through and figure this dude out. Because he is in 17 memories. It was very, very early. See if I can go to... He perished in the end part two. Because he made, he made it all the way to the end. He made it all the way to the end. And then was in escape. Okay, so he was in here. I'm pretty sure we're ident we identified this guy already as... Okay, so we've got Thomas Lanky was knifed. And then he said something about... Tell... Pete's mother I tried my best to pull him back to save him. Oh, no, you cut. Oh, no, bear up. See, this is just going to be like types of like pr pronunciation that I can't identify. Tell Pete's mother I tried my best to pull him back to save him. Pete's mother. I'm going to need to come back to this one. And then he was here. What's all this, you damn fool? Where he clubbed John Davies. He was also involved in this scenario. He was also here. He was also here. God damn it. He's involved in so many important events. Of course he was present during the doom because everything was getting messed up. It's funny how much more of a difficult one this guy feels to me. I think the most hilarious part is he's like supposed to be weak source. This dude's supposed to be easy to identify. <laughs> he's like one triangle and he's he's put me in mist in mystery forever, you know? Could he be John Naples, the seaman? You know what? We should try and identify more of the upper class team. Like, the carpenters should be easy to identify based on just how they look. You know what I mean? Like, I should just be able to look at someone in here and go, they're the carpenter, you know? You'd go, yep, based on what you're wearing, you're the carpenter. Like, this guy, this guy was the butcher. 
I reckon if we go to um, a memory, an earlier memory. Ah, oh, you know what? What's? I reckon it's this guy. I reckon it's this guy. What does his memories appear in? Calling. It might not be that guy. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. I'm just, it's him. I have a feeling. It could be. Based on nothing but my own hunch. It's a hunch. What I'll do is I'm going to have to dive into a memory specifically and look for someone that looks like a carpenter to find that information in. So let's go to Guys, what's a carpenter? Tradesman responsible for maintaining the integrity of the ship's wooden structures. I'm trying to think about where this guy would be during certain points. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. Who's the pole guy? Oh. <laughs> Damn, dude. They're two different people. <laughs> oh, no. This is the guy that I thought was Patrick O'Hagan. Not this guy. Okay, that's fine. All right, so this guy still eludes me as well. Oh, that's so funny. That is that is hilarious. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. I still haven't identified this person, actually. That makes sense. Silly me. So we've still got plenty of room for us to be stupid. Still need to figure out how this man was actually killed. Because so we still haven't done that. names we get by the people that we've already identified. I reckon we could confidently say where these people went. I don't know about who this person is, but I reckon that we'll be able to I figure out where they are based on this chapter location. So they are here. They're either there or heading to the Canaries. A lot of people were talking about have been talking about the Canaries in dialogue. A good way to nail this down would you can be like, hey, Emily is alive and went to the Canaries. But Miss Jane Bird is alive um, in the other location. Was that the other location? Yeah. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll do one of each. Because it's right in the middle. It's right in the middle. I 
need to figure out who this person is. He's hanging out next to the fourth mate. So I feel like... He's Davy James, the fourth mate steward. And he's going to be alive. No, <laughs> he's going to be alive. And let's pick Azor. Let's pick Azores. Let's pick the Canary Islands. E. We don't know. We don't know. But he's right next to the fourth mate. So I feel pretty confident that that's at least his guy. And they escaped at the end of this chapter. They escaped at the end of escape. I don't think that they would be drowned because Henry Evans gets out. Actually, you know what? If Henry Evans got out and went to Africa, they could have all ended up there. You know what I mean? Like, it might not even have anything to do with the... It might not even have anything to do with... the location of where they're at the moment. So we could put these... We could say that she could be alive in Africa too. Let's just... Let's think if they all went together. And they all settled down. But we obviously know that this is not true because we do not have... Oh! There we go. We did all three of them. So they all... They've all gone to Africa together. Yeah. They've all, they've all gone to Africa together. There you go. So Henry Evans being in Africa is kind of like the clue that you need for the rest of the people that they escaped with to also end up in Africa. Okay, that probably was very clear once we figured out where Henry was actually, so that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, we have now solved the disappearances on the escape. We're getting close to getting everyone in the escape chapter. We just need to figure out who this man was killed by. It's apparently easy. I mean, I really could go down the full list, but that would be boring, so I, we would we need to figure that out. We're getting there. We're solving some fates. We're solving some fates in unorthodox ways. In roundabout ways. Now, Bargain apparently is in the lazarette. Now, I don't think we can do this yet. Right? Or can we? Because he said that Bargain is not available. This chapter will remain unknown until you leave the ship and return the book to me. He possesses the details, but have elected to keep them private for now. But there is also a clue that says in the lazarette that kind of means we may be missing some crucial information that we might be able to access. I guess we'll take a look. The lazarette is in the cargo hold right at the back here. So let's see if we've got anything. Especially if the game is like, hey, in the lazarette. So we might be missing some crucial puzzle pieces here. If we're allowed. All the way to the bottom. And... Um... Oh, over the other side of the ship. That way. Other end. Silly me. Alright, other end of the ship. Here. Oh, yeah, because it's locked. Yeah, of course. It's locked. So this is the lazarette. And that's why we're not able to actually get in there. Makes sense. So we, we're not missing any pieces at all, really. It's inaccessible. Ah, oh, I don't know why that scared me. I guess because the body was upright. I was like, ah. Oh. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave that alone. 
Let's have a look at the Doom chapter again. This person. Who is this? How did they die? Is this the person that was below? Hmm. Might need to actually... Might need to dive into these memories to see. I think we can assume that these disappearances have all died the same way, where they've drowned by a terrible beast. But it's more so identifying who they actually are in terms of them being a top man. I feel like we can process of elimination these guys at this point, because there's like, there's two of them left of the Chinese top top men. So I might just get them out of my hair. Um, Cause we've got Li Hong and Huang Li and then there are people whose faces are concealed here. I think some people that are concealed here, visible here, like this guy. I think this guy is this guy. So what I can essentially do is do that and then see if I can get them this way. Oops, god damn it. Misclick. But I think I need to wait for another. I need to get another clue first before I get my three fates correct. So I'll leave that for now. Maybe let's have a look at the Doom again. Because this one is just about the fuse. Who is this and how did they die? This person appears in nine memories. Interesting. So they were present on the gun deck. I wonder where they are actually, because I might need to, I might be able to see if he's close to, might need to see if he's close to his, um, oh, because they're all covered, aren't they? They're all covered in the, when they're sleeping. Looking for this man. Okay, unholy captives. What the hell is going on? What do you know about these things about the chest and your dead friends? What are these monsters? Where are they from? You must tell us everything. The shell must be protected. He will all die. He talk about a shell, very dangerous. Shell? What shell? Okay, I think this is the... Okay, so this must be what they're talking about in regards to the end chapter, and then it's like they're at the bottom of the sea. So the shells are tied to the monsters. Okay, so that is tied to... These bodies, I believe. Unholy captives. Now, so they're talking about the shell. 
about the chest and your dead friends. This is me. These two, the two Indian fellas that didn't die when they got cold, they're still alive. What's their position? They're seamen, which means this man, oh, we've already got him. He's the Dane. And this is Nathan Peters. Okay, we've already identified all of them. They're all seamen, that's great. Just seamen in the ocean. Hmm, okay. You were eaten by a beast. What are you doing? What are you doing? All right, you're hanging out near this guy, but I don't know if you would be his mate. There you are. Okay, this this fella. Hmm. That's where he is in this chapter. Okay. Doesn't help much. This is the Frenchman. The captain who was so close to dying from spikes. Okay, this didn't this didn't give me the information that I wanted. Because man's on that boat. That's annoying. Get me out of here. I must go into another chapter. I must go into another chapter. Our list is getting shorter and shorter though, like it's it's gonna get easier to do process of elimination at this point when we think about it this way because there's only a few left. Only a few left. But I don't want to go through it in a way where we just, um, you know, just run through it and go, ah, oh, we'll just try and you know, just, just go through the names until we get them right. Stay back, it's already done for Nick. Is this guy Nick? The, the man in question, Nicholas Botterell? Oh, this could be Nicholas Botterell then. This guy, okay. He dies in this one and he's saying, out of the way, what's going on? It's already done for Nick. He might be the one that's dead or it might be the chapter before where this guy could be dead. This guy could be Nick. We're thinking previous chapter. Previous chapter. Cool, who did I get right? Who else is right? Nicholas Botterell was speared. Previous chapter. Oh, nice. We got the two Chinese topmen. There you go. We named them correctly. There we go. They're out of there. Ah, bada bing, a bada boom. Lovely. Another three. We're almost three quarters of the way through. That's pretty nice. There you go. Yep, so the name drop of Nick, and then I'm like, hmm, feels like that could be the chapter before. So that one was good. This man was devoured by a terrible beast. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, hang on. Keep pressure here. Hold him down. What madness is this? 20 years, my steward. Oh. 
All's fine, John. In and worse spots, I think. Where's the rest of his leg? Okay, hold on. 20 years, my steward, and never a doubt on your sanity. Who's the one talking to him? Let's... I, I need to enter this one. I need to enter this one. All right, so we need to go to... Oh, yes, this is the bone one. All right, we're going downstairs because I need to see who's holding him. And then we should be able to identify a steward. Da -da -da -da. There's some very clearly obvious dialogue there. Pointing out someone's identification. Da -da. Okay. Let's have a look. Now, this guy... Okay, he's the steward. Captain Steward? I don't think so. There is. Okay. There is a Captain Steward, Philip Dahl. Because this guy, I think, is going, What the fuck? I think he's the one talking. Yeah, I think he's the one talking. The surgeon and surgeon's assistant. Who's this guy? Oh, actually, no. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. This might be wrong. Wait a minute. Hold him down. What man is this? 20 minutes of doubt on your sanity. Tie him up. Actually, this guy. This guy is the Swede. This is Philip Dahl, the captain steward. This one. Because the captain is directly looking right at him. He's talking to him. Who the hell is that guy? Okay. Which means you... Hmm. Who are you? Hmm. Not sure. But we've identified someone else through that one. Let me go back and have a look. Okay, keep pressure here. 20 years. Ungodly beast, throw them back. Yeah, because that's a Swedish. And he's like, you fools. All's fine, John. Oh. Hang on. Is this man... John, and then they're asking where the rest of his leg is. Is he a John? Have we got a John in here? Well, we've got a... No, because that's... John's the mate. So, yeah. We don't have another John. Oh, no, actually, John Naples. We've got a John Naples. So this may be a John Naples, and this... Maybe Philip Dahl. The only way to get confirmation is that on that is we need to identify someone else. Three for three. That's the butcher. Should really try and identify the carpenter. Okay, they're bringing the chest down. Who's this? This guy. That's his friend. Unknown people. Unknown. Unknown, unknown, unknown. 
Okay. I need another character different memory to cling on to, but this is good. I feel pretty confident in those two that we've just titled. How the hell do I get out of this memory? There's the door. Can confound it. How do I get out of this? I can't get past. Ah, oh, there we go. I can slip in here. Get me out of here. <laughs> I'm trapped in a memory. Cool. That Seems pretty good. Now, that might be John Naples. Mayhaps. Now, this person. I know you spent it quick. Come on, boss. No, get down. Hey, catch. Okay, something in reference to being called a boss. So we're going to go to the gun deck. And we're going to see if we can maybe identify this scene. And it's going to be, well, I guess if we're, if we're going into boss territory. Who gets referred to as the boss, you know? Who gets referred to as the boss? Uh, is that this one or is it? Yeah, it's these. Okay, let's have a look. Soldiers of the Sea. Alright, because there's, there's, there's a lot going on here. Oh, hang on. No, I need to be in the chapter before this one. Oops. Hang on. I need to be... Oops. One above. Got that cracking sound. This guy. Kind of close to each other. Hmm. All right, we're going into this memory. What's going on? Stay back. It's all right. Hey, come on, boss. Come on, boss. Get there! Hey! Catch! Ah! Hmm. Come on, boss. No get down. A catch? Hang on, who's throwing the axe? Oh, axe. Okay, I reckon that this is our boss, and this is Winston Smith, the carpenter. Which means one of these boys has got to be the carpenter's mate. The fact that I'm definitely, oh, but like, this means that I'm definitely wrong about some of the ones that we've just done because we've filled in a few so far and we haven't got the yay well done you're smart so that is unfortunately an issue mm, you might not be carpenters then but you've who else would who else would be wielding an axe you know what i mean that's Nathan Peters. These two seem... Uh, these two seem like they could be... American. Or two Americans. 
with the carpenters. I, th I think I feel pretty good about that. This guy could be anyone. I mean, fuck, he could just be a random uh, seaman that just has an axe on him. So th that could be completely way off. Just, but like, if you're gonna call someone boss, you're definitely working for them. So, and then this guy, we've named him, and who was speared by a terrible beast, but this doesn't seem right. Mm hmm. Hmm. And then if we go back to these guys. I reckon this guy could definitely be our Swede. It's it's always an, a really interesting situation where you've got multiple that you've like named and tried to deduce and you've you feel pretty good about them and yet obviously they're wrong. <laughs> Obviously, they're wrong. That's always the really exciting part, because you're like, okay, I've missed a clue in regards to these. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at... We're going to have a look further onto this gentleman here, who's in three memories. Let's have a look at you. First memory. You're in the calling. Okay. Oh, okay. They're back, get the captain. Actually, hold on then. Wait a minute. Second mate and the fourth mate were here. This guy shot Edward. I remember that. You're there the one rowing the boat which means oh it's not the captain that's talking it's not the captain that's talking he's not the captain's steward he's one of the mate stewards hold on we we're close but we were just off um so in this scene, but those mates, those mates weren't there. It was the first mate that was there, which means was it the first mate that was talking to him? But we don't have the, the first mate steward has already been identified. So it would just be the second and the third. Okay, painful. Because he's the Swedish guy. No. Um, okay. Hmm. I, I I feel like I feel like we're good with this guy. But so now we're gonna look at this guy. All right, now we're gonna look at this guy. He was one of the firing men. God, I would love to just be able to figure out what the hell, <laughs> what the hell the deal is with this. Um. We 
be hilarious if unknown enemy was the truth. It's not. He was killed by Edward Spratt. Um. Yeah, this one's this one's painful. Okay, so he was there. He was also here. Talking about the shells. John Naples. Are you John Naples? He's the only John there. Because the fourth mate was not there. See how this is the hard part where I'm like, it feels like this is John. And it feels like this is this. Which means we're just not looking at it correctly. If we've clearly tried to deduce multiple and none of them are saying well done. I need to look elsewhere. I'm convinced with like every ounce of my being that these are the carpenters. Why is the game playing a trick on me? This man was spiked by a terrible beast. Those are spikes, right? And you... You perished in Soldiers of the Sea. A hideous monster perished simultaneously with a brave but unfortunate soul. Alright, let me check. I'm gonna go check out this one. So we're gonna check out. I'm gonna go down to the bottom. We'll check out this beast because maybe that's what I'm missing. I wanna see how this, this guy's died in the crime scene. I'm looking at these guys like, you are the carpenters. But, but the game is not giving it to me. So I'm, there's a, there's definitely a, a crucial element to this that I'm missing. Main Carpenter Man looks proper spiked by a terrible beast. So we're going to check out his mate and we're going to see what he looks like. Let's see, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What have we said? He was speared. I wonder... Oh, I wonder if they're trying to get me on the stipulation because it seems like it's spikes being shot out. But I wonder if they're going to... I wonder if they're doing the stipulation that it's a s spears because they're thrown and spikes if it's like more of a direct hit. But that seems ridiculous. Is he being spiked and is he being speared? Hmm. I'm still not getting a well done. So, I'm being what the fuck? Okay. The ones that I'm so confident on, what is happening? The ones that I'm so confident on. Hmm, we don't have, he's only in three memories. And we don't have a death for this guy, so that makes things difficult. Where is this, where is this dude? Three memories. Show me your memories. 
Where is he? So he is in the calling. Unholy captives. And then unholy captives. And he's just being dragged away. Okay, hang on. So tie him up and put him in the lazarette with the Oh. Okay, hang on. Tie him up and put him in the lazarette with those things. He may yet find his senses. What's in there? What are those things? What are those things? All right, where is, where's our captain's? Steward, okay. Unknown. You can't even, yeah, it's just listed as unknown. You can't even. Yeah, that's not, that's not a death for us to fill in, which means we can't tick this guy off. Even if we know it's him, we can't tick this guy off because we don't have a death. It just says it's just permanently unknown because he just gets thrown in the lazarette, which means this guy is tied to the bargain chapter. He's got to be tied to the bargain chapter because that's where our first clue is in the bargain chapter, in the lazarette. So I can't, even though I feel so confident about who this guy is, I can't go anywhere with that. So that's unfortunate. Oh, that is unfortunate. Um, okay. Oh, I think I might have the wrong death for this guy. That might be my problem. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Because he's got the whole leg thing. Where's the rest of his leg? And I think that's why I've said he's been devoured. But he might have just... Oh, it might be something else. Would torn apart count? <laughs> um, hmm... Interesting. It might be the death. Cause he's he was not he was not eaten. He was definitely not decapitated, he's just missing a leg. Ooh. Hmm. This is an interesting one. Where's the rest of his leg? And that's the bones. I, I need to investigate. I need to investigate this man again in his leg. I feel like the reason why we're spending so much time in particular on these is because it feels like I have them in the palm of my hand. You know what I mean? It feels like I legitimately have the answers to these people, but they're not, it's not giving me a well done. It's just like, there's definitely just something being missed here. I've assumed that he's been I think I've assumed that he's been torn apart by a beast because of the leg but I think the sword I think that this is an indirect kill by whoever has removed the leg was it the captain because the sword was close to him or was it the surgeon 
Has the surgeon killed him? I don't... <sighs> he did not expire from old age. I don't think you... It wasn't axed. This is the worst, getting the specifics here. I like that poisoned is even there. Um, hmm. Can oh, cannibalized. Cannibalized. Oh, it says devoured if it's the beast. It says cannibalized. Like, ooh. Oh, that's wild. Cannibalized is even an option. That's cool. Um, hmm. hit my life we we get like this thing where we're on like a pretty cool streak where we start figuring out some information and then we just we find ourselves in a situation like this and we are lost now he's like where's the rest of his leg and the leg is all the way over the, the other side but there is a sword involved here oh oh hang on maybe the reason why this fucker is being taken away because maybe he did it oh maybe this is not two separate instances taking place at the same time but it's actually connected he might have been killed with a sword by this guy um potentially i'm just struggling to find his name hmm He's like, he's done it. Yeah, no, he's done it. Because he's like, hold him down. What madness is this? You never doubt in your sanity. These ungodly beasts carry a curse. Throw them back or doom us all. Okay, hang on. I think he was killed by this guy. But the sword, it would have been like with the sword... torn apart <laughs> um, hmm could have been torn apart it wasn't directly killed with the sword this one is is killing me I feel like he's definitely John but it's the who done it aspect that's wiping me out here. What's it? Oh. Oh. We're literally just sitting on the cannibalized option, aren't we? We were literally just talking about the cannibalized thing. Maybe where's the rest of his leg? And the reason why it's like bones, was he eating his leg? It doesn't pop up, so maybe not. Oh, I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. No, I'm going crazy. What if it was, and maybe the reason why I'm not getting it right is because I need three to be right. Maybe, maybe you was spiked. Maybe you were speared. Damn it. I was really hoping for a well done. I, <laughs> okay. Go back to your original spots. And leave me alone. This is, this is terrible all right i need to take a break from these guys because we've been hyper focusing on them this crime scene is is killing me this whole this whole crime scene is killing me i, I need to take a break from it for sure because I'm hyper I'm hyper fixated on these these ones in particular. It's killing me. I'm out. Oh, 
The leftover bones being here make me feel like his leg was being eaten. Beautiful night out tonight, isn't it? Beautiful night for getting stuck on me murders. This is honestly just anyone who was in the firing line. It's kind of weird that it was... Oh, actually, hang on. God, am I being dumb? Wait a minute. Oh, you know what this is going to be? Oh, this will just be whoever's... Whichever bullet penetrated first. Isn't it? It'll be whoever's bullet penetrated the body first. That's really interesting. I feel like this is this is this is almost a little bit annoying in that sense, you know? You'll look at the bullet that's the furthest away and then it's whichever one it's it's like they're all shooting the guy. You know, did any of them miss, you know what I mean? I sentence you to death by firing line. Damn. Is that a miss? Mr. Wolf. Oh, my, wait. Ready, men. Aim. Fire. Four people shoot. That makes contact. This one shoots. You missed. This one, sh oh, three of them missed. Oh, wow. There was only one killer. And it's this guy. Who are you? This dude is so crucial. Okay, he was... He killed this guy. He was also killed by Captain. And he killed this guy as well. He's tied to so many fates. How is he one triangle? This man is like so obscure. He's one of the guys. What really annoys me in this situation is it puts me in a position where I feel that I just need to process of elimination him. You know? I think I thought he was this guy for ages. Well, he's one of the English boys. He's one of the English boys. But again, I put the name in here and it doesn't tell me that I'm right. Let's let's see if he's Henry. I've put in so many and none of them are right. And then if I and then let's say that he was shot by Henry Brennan. What? Oh, wow. Okay. The three Henry Brennan fates. He's just the first English... The first Englishman. That does my head in. That one does my head in, it does. Henry Brennan. Just a random English seaman is the one to get the, sh the killing blow because I didn't analyze the bullet trajectories that three of them missed. Only one got the killing blow. So that whole time, that should have been clear to me. I was like, oh, there's no like executed option, which means there's only one perpetrator. But the thing that annoys me about that is I was like, God, we, we just... We were just going to go down in that order and single them out. But what that means, what that means is my absolute confident 
nature of these are the carpenters is wrong. Oh, cool, oh man. God damn it. God damn it. I thought that these two would, would be our carpenters. Oh man. Well, that's wild. This is our this is our sketcher. I love that he's sat here. That's great. Have I identified you? Yes, because you're the cook along with the butcher. God damn. Well, I'll be damned. It was the... <laughs> it was the rooster. Interesting. Hmm. Second mate. Second mate steward. <gasps> if he's Irish, that'll be great because that goes with my whole thing that I thought this man was Patrick O'Hagan the whole time. And he turns out he actually was still Irish because I was like, he looks Irish. I reckon that that's his mate. Which means you are the third mate. And if you're right behind him, you are the third mate steward, Roderick Anderson. And then second mate, I think we already got this one. Yeah, fourth mate steward is alive in Africa and he's with fourth mate. Cool, 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 cool. That's excellent. Where's yours? Have we identified your your mate? Me? Is he one that's shooting? Based on the outfit, they're all dressed the same. The mates are dressed the same. Oh no, yeah, because we got him already. First mate steward was killed. He's uh, right in the back here. Okay, so these guys are addressed the same, which means you, mate, you're also a steward. Oh, you'll be the ship steward. You'll be this guy will be the ship steward. Oh, we've named multiple and it's not telling me well done, which means we could be wrong. <laughs> oh, that'll teach me to so confidently name them. This is funny because all the people that I've, I, I feel like I've identified here, I'm like, I feel like you are who I am saying that you are. Game is saying no. Oh, actually, I think the re oh, hang on, I've still got um was strangled because I think this is dating way back to you're still breathing, so I assumed that he was strangled. Wait a minute, I think I need to check out this death scene again. If he's dead, this guy actually might have been spiked or speared by a beast. And that could be where we're fucking this one up. Um, I might have to go back to the calling again. I think we're at a point where I think the, the fun part, the fun part, the definite fun part about this that I think my brain is 
getting uh, frustrated with is uh, it feels like we are so genuinely close. It feels like we are so genuinely close on so many of these that I'm identifying right now, but they're not triggering. I'm missing a, a key thing. So who is this guy? Oh, he's got a... He's got a knife in his head? Okay, hang on. He's got a knife in his head. Is that a knife or a spear? But I think he's been knifed by that guy. Because he's doing that. I think he's been knifed. I don't think... Yeah, that looks like a human utensil to me. Right? That's a knife in the head. He's been... Not strangled. He's been knifed. Okay, that's all I needed from you. He comes back from sea and he's shot and killed. Patrick O'Hagan was spiked. All right, that's good. I'm going to leave for now because all I needed was that. He's That guy's been knifed. But was he knifed by him? I would say so because he's the only one alive. And he would have had to have fought him off. I doubt that a, one of the sea creatures is going to knife him. Knifed by a beast? Which means maybe if I have a look at our stewards here, I need to see how they've died. Was he crushed with a cannon, you know? Philip Dahl. Ugh. This guy. Were you spiked by a terrible beast? I haven't seen your thing in so long that we might have to have a look. Oh, no, hang on. I think this one needs to be updated because I remember something happening here. I remember this corpse. But if you look earlier in the memory, it's... um. His body's like here and he's like crawling away. So something else has happened here, I think. So let's go to the all up deck. Let's check out this body. Let's try and nail down these uh, these stewards. As problematic as they are. This guy was definitely spiked. I hate that I can only highlight. I can't highlight them. Outside of the cram. Okay, so blood went down here and you bled out. But then there was another shot that came out, and I think... Oh, this guy sh Oh, there you go. This man, this man shot and missed the beast. And, and shot this guy. Oh, you're not gonna let me... I can't get to him from here? Oh, that's, of course, classic. All right, hold on. Who is this fucker? Who is this guy? All right, well, 11 others were present. What is he, what's he dressed like? Oh, I think it's this guy. Yeah, all right, hold on. He was shot with a gun by our Frenchman. He was not, yeah, see, this is the thing. I need to review the deaths that I messed up. Um. 
I need to review the deaths that I messed up from much, much earlier that I never corrected. Okay. We've got the ship's steward. He was shot by Charles. We've got the second mate's steward. He was knifed. And we've got the third mate's steward that was crushed by a loose cannon. Nice. Do you know what's very satisfying about that? Is we just knocked out the stewards and we knocked out the three fates tied to one guy. That that Those were some satisfying trios. That was really good. That was great. Okay. That's nice. I think these are our disappearances here. We're getting there. We're getting there. Let's have a look at this crew list. Unknown. These are definitely the carpenters. I don't know what's going on here. They're getting speared and spiked. I don't know what else you want to tell me. Um, unknown. I have no idea who this Timothy guy is or where he is, which is so funny. I don't think this guy was cannibalized. I think he was torn apart by him because it looks like he's like, what's going on with you? Your sanity. And he's, t and he's torn his leg off and that's how he's died. That took a lot of going over that crime scene multiple times to figure out what the hell was going on there. I, you assume that the leg gets ripped off by a beast, but then you, you go, wait, this guy is being, his sanity is being called into question. It makes sense that they're actually doing it to this guy. And then we have these. I think these might be more disappearances. Wow. Okay. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine left, which is in threes. Three threes. This is, and this is like, pro, essentially this does get down to process of elimination time. And the game does say, hey, you're gonna have process of elimination. A hundred percent. Like a hundred percent. Oh, but what if he's the carpenter? What if he's the carpenter's mate? Interesting. I thought this was the guy that was saying boss get down though. What if they are the other way around? The other way around. I swear that was the guy saying boss get down because he was in the back going get down. Damn. Yeah, John Naples was torn apart by Philip Dahl and Marcus Gibbs was speared by a terrible beast. I was mixing up the spike, the speared and spiked and I needed to change their identities. Genuinely. I genuinely thought because of him already being down that he would be like, boss, get down. Damn. Okay. That's just misunderstanding that whole scenario. That sucks. But we did it. Okay. There's another three. There's another three. Who has not been identified that I think that we should just be able to be like, you are this person, I think, at this point. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this, this has got to be us. There's just got to be a Scottish guy, right? <laughs> or he's Alexander Booth. Or he's George Shirley. We are now at a point where we have... Four left to identify. They can, they can only be four. But we don't know... Okay, you perished. Why don't I have your death on here? What the fuck? Hang on. Why don't I have your death in the, my book? All right, to the gun deck. To the gun deck, how did you die? And are you Timothy or are you an Englishman? Let's find out. I I think we're at the point where we can identify the, uh, like assess these clues to determine who they are, but it really is a process of elimination time. I am proud of the discoveries we have had 
I am slapping myself in the face and face palming at the ones that we have uh, so unfortunately uh, like looked over or just kind of gotten wrong in only the slightest way. And I'm like, this feels so right, but there's something so wrong. Uh, oh, I remember. I remember. It's because there was two bodies here and I was really confused. I'm like, I'm like, what the hell happened here? I remember now. Um, yes. This is the thing that kind of confuses me. Is this is this guy. Being like blown the fuck away, but his body was also here, but he's not there anymore. Um, and I'm like, maybe he got taken away by the beast or he's like outside. That was the con that was a confusing one for me. I remember why I haven't filled in his um, death. Because it's either he was shot by a cannon and just absolutely eviscerated to the point where he's just not even here. Um, lost with a cannon by a beast. I don't know. Hang on. What happened with this guy? I said that he was blasted with a cannon by a terrible beast. Or... Or... Um... He was... I don't know, like, torn apart? Uh, pulled out of the ship and he's, like, drowned? Because th there's not, I don't think there's a, there's a trace of this fucking dude's body anywhere. I need to go back once more, and I think I need to find it in an earlier death. Because, alright. This is it. Load, move my hands, aim level ready, no, belay spark. Was he taken by the... I guess maybe you could technically have it that this guy killed him because he lit the spark, but it confirmed that it was okay with the beast because he's holding the cannon. And he's holding on to... After this whole window's eviscerated, did, did this shoot out? Did he get shot by his own cannon? I don't think this cannon is in operation. Oh, this death, this one, this one's... Either he shot himself with his own cannon on the side. I don't think, can you choose yourself? He's, I guess you could have suicide. Su suicide's in here, right? You can't have suicide with a cannon. So I feel like... Fell overboard. Fell overboard to his death, maybe. Otherwise, he was strangled by a beast. It's, it's tough. I think we might have had a situation of him being overboard. Because his body's nowhere to be found in the next scene. That one's really tough for me. This guy... Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just like... 
he could be any of these. You know, it's it is a process of elimination time. Um, but how did he die, right? Because maybe we've got maybe we've gotten the death wrong. Maybe we got his death wrong. We said that he was spiked. Maybe he was speared by a beast. I don't know. I don't think we've had a poisoned one. I remember this one because he's he's holding. Oh, actually, hang on. Oh, hang on, because he was hold. He's holding the guy, isn't he? So this should be a double death of being spiked by a terrible beast, but it's just a matter of getting the names. Who else hasn't been identified? Who else haven't we got in this list? Alexander Booth and George Shirley. That's a George. Just looking at his face. That's a George. Uh, who else hasn't been identified? This guy? <laughs> the only problem with this is it's just like... Obviously, none of it's right because the game's not telling me well done yet. This is the point where we're right at the end and we're on our final names, you know what I mean? Which just feels like bad to do. We know that we're obviously in that situation where we're like, we can see so many different people and we're like, um, we can see so many different people in that cargo. <sighs> that's our Scott, that's our Scotsman. Two more fates, correct. Only two. Timothy. There we go. And... Alexander was drowned by a terrible beast. It only did two this time. Interesting. Which means we're on our final two. They really just were like, final two for your process of elimination. Congratulations. And it is this guy and this guy. So out of our last names, we've got Hamandu Dion and we have George Shirley. Fell overboard to his death. All currently solvable fates, correct. A little bit of process of elimination there. And by a little bit, probably kind of a lot, but it's supposed to be that way. We did finally determine fell overboard. There is nothing left to do on the Obra Dinn. There is nothing left to do on the Obra Dinn. Wow. Oi! Are you finally done? Are you finally done? You know what? Laying it all out like I did in those first couple of episodes and then going through it backwards and correcting past mistakes and then being able to connect the dots all this information available to me feels like it's been pretty good right that feels like it's been pretty good it's probably been quite a few face palm moments quite a bit of head scratching decisions but alas we've identified the crew we've identified the crew nothing left to do on the Obra Dinn. The rest would come, the rest is disappearances. And um, the bargain chapter, we've got to go. Um, did we do, is there any disappearances that we haven't done? Is that even possible? Let's check if we've got all our disappearances. I think so.
no disappearances in this one. The Doom has disappearances that I think that we've got, right? Yep, Bargain, which has the Lazarette. There were disappearances on the escape. No, we got all the disappearances as well. Nice. Nothing left to do on the Obra Dinn. For some reason, I thought we still had some disappearances. I don't know why, but we got them. We already did them. Okay. Nice. Let's head back onto the boat. Let me down. Oh, it's time to go and deliver this one to Henry Evans. We should go. Storm's nearly about, so we won't be coming back. Finally. Sit down so you don't fall out. Oh, that was like a choice, I think. That was like a timed, like, you can quickly go back on the boat if you still have stuff to do, maybe? <laughs> Yar! I be a pirate detective. One week later, fast shipping over to Morocco there. The Honorable East India Company, insurance assessment for the good ship Oberdin, victim of calamitous events at sea, prepared by the Company Office of Investigation. Ship, damaged in squall, Atlantic, sunk in storm, Falmouth, payout claim 20,000 pound. Cargo company, all cargo lost, payout claim 5,000 pound. All cargo lost for the crown, payout claim for restitution, £3,000. Captain Robert Whittrell, suicide gun, criminal findings, murder of four crewmates, estate forfeited to the crown. William Hoskett, the first mate, was shot by a gun by Robert Whittrell. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny, estate fine, £25. Edward Nichols, the second mate, was shot with a gun. Criminal findings, murder of two crewmates, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo, the estate was fined £100. This is cool. Oh, actually, hang on. Oh, yeah. I was wondering if I have to click on any of these. Martin Parrott, unknown fate, findings of merit, extraordinary valour, exceptional performance of duties, estate awarded outstanding wages and reward, £90. John Davies was clubbed by H. Brennan. Criminal findings, murder of one crewmate, state was fined £15. Alfred Clestel, torn apart by a beast. Exceptional performance of duties, a state awarded outstanding wages and reward of £70. Charles Minor, torn apart, murder of a crewmate. Henry Evans, alive. Abandonment of crew and vessel, a state awarded outstanding wages, £50. James Wallace, clawed, extraordinary valour, a state awarded outstanding wages and reward. Winston Smith, spiked. Extraordinary Valor, awarded £60. Marcus Gibbs, outstanding wages donated to Pension Fund, estate un uh, unknown. Thomas Sefton was struck, estate awarded outstanding wages. Emil O'Farrell, spiked. Exceptional performance of duties. Christian Wolf, exceptional performance of duties. Olus, Olus Wieta, Murder of one crewmate and attempted mutiny. Duncan McKay. Abandonment of crew and vessel. Findings of demerit. Finley Dalton. State awarded outstanding wages. Edward Spratt. State awarded outstanding wages. Abigail Hoskett. No claim made. Nunzio. Knifed. No claim made. Emily Jackson. Alive in Africa, murder of a crewmate, findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel. Miss Jane Bird, abandonment of crew and vessel. Bunland Lim, no claim. It Bang Seer, murder of one crewmate, state unknown. Murder of one crewmate, Chow Tan, state unknown. Hock Seng Lao, no claim made. Uh, Zangi Sathi, 
Outstanding wages of £35. Philip Dahl, unknown. Failure to perform duties, estate fine, £35. Paul Moss, the first mate steward, exceptional performance of duties. Samuel Galligan, attempted mutiny and theft of cargo. Roderick Anderson, outstanding wages. Davy James, abandonment of crew and vessel. Peter Milroy, extraordinary valor. Thomas Lanky, Awarded Outstanding Wages. Charles Hershtick, Exceptional Performance of Duties. Omid Ghoul, Exceptional Performance of Duties. Timothy Butement, Extraordinary Valor. Huang Li, Exceptional Performance of Duties. Ji Zhang, Extraordinary Valor. Li Hong, Attempted Mutiny, Theft of Cargo. Wei Li, Extraordinary Valor, Exceptional Performance of Duties. Nicholas Botterill, a state awarded outstanding wages. Marba, exceptional performance of duties, extraordinary valor, ex a state unknown. Lewis Walker, attempted mutiny. Leonid Volkov, murder of a crewmate, a state unknown. Alarkis Nikishin, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo. Alexei Toparov, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo. Nathan Peters, murder of a crewmate, findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel. Lars Lind, not actually responsible for that death because, you know, it was an accident. John Naples, exceptional performance of duties. Renfred Rajub, ex outstanding wages donated to pension fund. Abraham Akbar, exceptional performance of duties. William Wasim, exceptional performance of duties. Solomon Syed, estate awarded outstanding wages. Hamandu Diom, exceptional performance of duties, estate unknown. Henry Brennan, murder of a crewmate, one. He murdered two people, didn't he? Because he also murdered one of the mates, did he not? As well as, I guess that he was, he murdered that guy, but it was an, a firing line execution. Alexander Booth, the seaman. The seaman, abandonment of crew and vessel. Patrick O'Hagan, attempted mutiny and theft of cargo. George Shirley, extraordinary valor. Samuel Peters, crushed. A preliminary draft of this assessment has been approved by the Royal Trade Guarantor. Total claimed £29,285. On behalf of the Honorable East India Company, I assert of all old statements as accurate and declare this matter closed in its entirety. HEIC Chief Inspector. It's me. What's my character's name? The pocket watch remains in your possession. The book returns to its original owner, Henry Evans, in Morocco, as requested. Off it goes into the void, into the Macintosh void. And now what? Because there's still a bargain chapter. Ooh, one year later. One year later. There is a knock at the door. Coming. I was enjoying my tea. Tell Martha I said hello. Can you believe it? A package at this hour. Oh, that would be the postman. It smells just dreadful. Better you don't open it inside. I'll be turning in now. Tea's in the kitchen if you need more.
Chief Inspector, I write to you with the unfortunate news that Dr. Evans has passed away. He succumbed to his illness shortly after receiving your package. He was very pleased with your correspondence and asked that his gratitude be expressed by returning the book to you, along with the means to complete it. As for the three of us that remain, the Obra Din is a distant memory and a dreadful chapter in our lives that we wish to forget. Do not write back. Regards, Jane Bird. I love that we just have this magical stopwatch that allows us to remember death. Okay. What is this? The means to complete the book? Ha. Huh. Oh, right. This tale belongs to you now. Please finish it. We're going to get taken back to the ship through remembering the death in the lazarette with whatever the hell this is. Oh, that's cool that we're able to do it from here. All right. There you are. Collect your things. Where's the key? To that door. Gone. Yeah. There's no time. We need to go. Right. Here you go. What are you up to? Nothing worse. Oh, okay. Right in. And here we are. Oh, and here we are in the lazarette. Oh, no! No! Not the monkey! No! What the fuck? No, that's... Oh, no. That's why we have the fucking... That's the monkey's paw. Oh shit, you put the chest in here as well. No, dude. How dare you? Oh shit. Okay. It's just a bunch of pixels on a screen. Don't cry over the monkey getting shot in the face. What the fuck? And the monkey's poor curls. Okay, let's have a look here. A friendly but not entirely pleasant monkey companion was sacrificed in the pursuit of knowledge. So they've thrown away the key. So the first mate steward was there. And the surgeon was there. And also, that was it. We start checking out the other bodies. The sacrifice was made in the pursuit of knowledge. Ooh, the spikes. A third shell. The captain didn't toss them all. Leave it. Help me lift this. <laughs> Hmm. Well, you free. Give it the shell. Do it. Hoist it out. To the main deck. Throw it over. Lock the door when you leave. Get the tail, boy. In return. Uh, the ship. The Uberton.
So shells that were not all thrown overboard. Shells. Giving it to people, like the the, the the creatures that they had in here. Oh, ooh, hang on. Oh, there we go. They gave the shell back. It, it and this is the glowing shit. There you go. There you go. That's what we've been seeing this whole time when we're like looking out. Wow. Okay, they gave it the shell. So we're. The shells were stolen? The shells were stolen. And then the sea creatures came for them and they paid the price for it. And then the goddamn Kraken came through as well. Um, spiked, I think I would say, considering he'd be laying there with the spikes inside of him. Third shell, captain didn't cost it all. Leave it, help me lift this. Then see the Obra Din home. He's alive. This is such an interesting little encounter here. We get to see the unknowns. He was spiked. Ooh, hold on. I thought we'd be looking at you next, but no. I'll kill every last one of you monsters. Withdraw the Kraken, or I will kill you all. Oh, this is the captain. Yep. That's why he that's why he's saying that That's why he's saying that the when he came out. He was saying that the... He'd stopped it. Huh. He's holding the shell and he's like... And he's got no goddamn arm left. This is some like Ark of the Covenant shit. Where he's like... He's touching it. He's like... Ah! His, his like a whole hand catches on fire. So I think we've got his death. Oh, those monster screams are like haunting. A captured beast fought against its jailer and was speared for the trouble. So now we can see why the Kraken with was withdrawn. Oh, another one. Right. That makes sense because they freed the third one. Oh, three shells. This is your Kraken! You brought it here! Three shells, one for each. Damn, dude! Great job, Captain. You've done a tremendous amount of work here today. This is how the Kraken ends up withdrawing, I suppose. Hmm. So, shoots one, spears the other, but then... The third is let free later. Unholy creatures' defiant shrieks were greeted with a fatal bullet. Time for part one.
Yeah. Pulled it out. Gets put in there with the beasts after going crazy. Touches it. And, uh... Hand, uh, hand gets burned right off. <laughs> there you go. Wild. This is why it's called the bargain. A bargain was made to call off the Kraken. So they returned one of the shells. Two of the shells, I guess, were thrown overboard to the ocean and then the other, the third shell was given back to one of them. And then, then spared. And the monkey was killed. So we may have the monkey's paw so we can use the stopwatch to remember this sequence. Well, you burned. Well done. All fates correct. Philip Dahl burned to death. And Martin Parrot was spiked by a terrible beast. Pirate detective, let's go. Okay. Now what? The door opens. Okay. How is this gonna wrap up? Is my question. That's how it wraps up. <laughs> I was wondering if there was going to be like some sort of like, like thing that would just happen at the end and that was it. No, but that was cool. For my dad. That's so sweet. That's wholesome. Wow. The return of the Aubradin was so much fun. That was great. Um, never has a game made me feel so stupid in my life. But at the same time, I think we did pretty well. Um, you know, all things in, in balance. There was a lot of silly moments for sure, but I think we made some really good deductions. We managed to connect the, the red string across many, uh, many a people. And then you start getting to the end and it gets to the point where you're like, yeah, process of elimination at this point. You start having to be like, it's, you're either this guy or you're this guy. Um, and it's funny that there are some names out there that we were like, this guy is this person. And then they were just not that person at all. And it was just a completely random dude in the background, which is so funny. Uh, but that was really well done. I liked the stuff that towards the end especially in last episode and this episode you start looking at these characters and you go oh wait you're obviously this person and you're obviously this person but at the start you're just kind of like ah you know I, you started looking at you start looking at people's positions where they're actually at how close they are to certain people and you start going oh okay this makes so much sense. And then when you figure out one person in a group, you're like, okay, you're all connected. And it starts like having a bit of a domino effect like that, like figuring out all the stewards. You're like, oh, you're all right here. And that makes so much sense. Uh, it was it was great. I, I really enjoyed this. I do genuinely hope this has been an enjoyable, for the most part, an enjoyable journey to follow me on through this discovery and connecting the dots because I, I thought this was great. Uh, the music was really enjoyable. The sound design, great. Uh, uh, the the voice acting that we're going through right now, very, very good voice acting. I am not the best at identifying a lot of these uh, accents that we heard. Uh, and I also am a victim of ADHD tunnel visioning, which made this 
very funny, right? It made this very humorous and entertaining. <laughs> like how I was like, this guy is definitely the carpenter and this guy is definitely the carpenter's mate. And it couldn't possibly be the other way around because it couldn't possibly. And I'm switching together the fates and I'm not switching the names because I'm like the way that I've interpreted the dialogue. I'm like, nah, they're in a position where it totally fits. And it's all over the place. But we, outside of some like little silly ones, I feel like we were really close to a lot of them. And we're like, how exactly did you die? Because there's like, it feels like there's like so many different deaths that could have occurred here. Um, and it's great to have those like moments where you go, oh God, the firing line. You were so obviously like shot by only one person. Because look at all these bullet trajectories and look at how they all miss, you know what I mean? There you go. 60 fates solved in 7 hours and 19 minutes. I probably, I'm not sure if that's the exact total runtime of the playthrough. There may have been a moment where I kept the game on where I've like gone to the bathroom or had to tend to my dog. But... 7 hours, 19 minutes. There you go. I don't know if the timer counts when the game is paused. That would be the answer to that one, if it is 7 hours, 19. Or if you're still paused, it still counts as playtime. Sometimes I get, I pause the game and I get a little bit distracted. But I think that's pretty good. And that was Return to the Obra Dinn. Uh, short and sweet. Just like Papers, Please. Kind of completing that in a few episodes which has been really refreshing and nice to like start a game that doesn't go on forever as much as I do like a longer experience something short and sweet is always nice to to sprinkle in here as well so thank you so much for joining me for the return of the Obra Dinn thank you to those that have suggested it and I'm glad that I finally ticked to this one off my list it was uh one of the more unique games that I've ever played and I loved it a lot uh across the board just everything to love about it. Very unique art style and how they incorporate those old school uh, graphics, but in a 3D space, the way that the game worked and how you navigated through the story, remembering all of the deaths, piecing it all together was really, really fun. As much as I got lost and overwhelmed and, you know, totally felt stupid, but at the same time, it felt very rewarding to discover these things as well. So I do hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.